In the Pokemon TCG, cards which accelerate your own energy count on feel to set up strong attacks are often some of the strongest cards available in any given format. Whenever a new supporter card is released which attaches energy cards to your Pokemon, players always try to find the best possible ways to break them. Today, we're going to look at some of the best supporter cards that attach energies to your own Pokemon. And at number 10, we have Inns of Resolve. This supporter card lets you discard the top six cards of your deck and then attach any basic energies discarded to your bench dragon type Pokemon. Out of any card on this list, Inns of Resolve has the potential to attach the most energy at once, totaling at six additional basic energy if every card discarded was an energy. Sadly, many factors stop this card from seeing much competitive success. Inns of Resolve was clearly designed to synergize with a very specific card released in the same set. Reshiram and Zekrom GX. This dragon type Pokemon has the fabled Flare Bolt attack for one fire and one electric energy. This attack deals 90 damage for each basic fire or basic electric energy you discard from your bench Pokemon when you use it, up to a maximum of 270 damage. At the time of this card's release, 270 damage for two energy was extremely good, as it one hit KO'd many strong tag team GX Pokemon and many players thought this deck would be a strong meta strategy on release. However, there was one major flaw with the strategy. Fabled Flare Bolts simply required too much energy to use effectively. Since you needed both two energies attached to your active Pokemon and three energies somewhere on your bench to deal the full 270 damage, the deck relied too heavily on Inns Resolve, putting all the energies you needed into play. Because Inns Resolve attached a varying amount of energy cards, depending on what was in the top six cards of your deck, and Inns Resolve that missed on crucial attachments could be game determinative for Reshram and Zekrom GX players. This deck saw absolutely zero success at major competitive events, and at best was a fringe expanded format deck. Luckily for Inns Resolve's playability, another powerful dragon Pokemon in Arceus and Diaga and Palka GX, or ADP for short, released at the exact same time. This card defined most of the standard format while it was legal there due to how strong its altered creation GX attack was. For one metal energy, your Pokemon's attacks dealt an additional 30 damage for the rest of the game. Also, if you had an extra water energy attached to use this attack, you took additional prize cards for every knockout on your opponent's Pokemon. Some players experimented with Inns Resolve in various ADP strategies, but ultimately found the deck's lower attack costs, meaning you didn't need a supporter to set them up. Inns Resolve wasn't the most successful card during its time in the standard format yet its sparse play gave it enough success to make it onto this list. And at number 9, we have Gardenia's Vigor. This card lets you draw two cards and then attach up to two basic grass energies from your hand to one of your bench Pokemon. Drawing cards, even a small amount while attaching extra energies, is a very powerful effect. On its release, this card saw use in a wide variety of rogue strategies, like Hisuian Lilligant V-Star, Reggie Drago V-Star, or Fringe Arceus V-Star variants using Grass-type Pokemon. These decks never put up good results at high-level events. The issue with Gardenia's Vigor wasn't being an unreliable card like Inns Resolve. Rather, there just weren't many Pokemon cards that needed to be played alongside it. In the standard format, Double Turbo Energy already existed, as a means to speed up powerful attacks like Arceus V-Star's Trinity Nova a turn earlier than otherwise possible. If Double Turbo Energy wasn't in the standard format, Gardenia's Vigor might have been more popular as a way to speed up strong attacks. It's not this card's standard format play that gets it on this list, though. Gardenia's Vigor serves a very important role in expanded format Reggie Drago V-Star decks. For two Grass and one Fire Energy, this card's Apex Dragon Attacks lets you use attacks from any Dragon-type Pokemon in your discard pile. Due to the expanded format including all cards released since Black and White Base set in 2011, Reggie Drago V-Star has access to both the strongest Dragon Pokemon released in the game's history and many other synergistic cards like Double Dragon Energy and Battle Compressor. In expanded Reggie Drago V-Star, Gardenia's Vigor has a legitimate and important niche. Since this strategy uses Tapu Lele GX to search any supporter card when put onto the bench, if the Reggie Drago V-Star player has a hand with excess grass energy, they can easily search Gardenia's Vigor to put the extra energy straight into play and enable an Apex Dragon attack. This highly synergistic toolbox strategy is one of the strongest expanded format decks at the time, and its power earns Gardenia's Vigor this spot on the list. And at number 7, we have Rose. This supporter lets you attach up to two basic energy cards from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon VMAX at the cost of discarding your hand. The downside of discarding your entire hand meant that Rose saw very little to no play for a large part of its time in the standard format. Some players tried to use the card alongside Rayquaza VMAX, but this deck never caught on. It wasn't until the release of B-Barrel nearly two years after Rose was first printed that the card started seeing competitive success. B-Barrel has the Industrious and Scissors ability, which lets you draw until you have 5 cards in your hand. If you had a B-Barrel in play, Rose's downside of discarding your hand either didn't matter, 
or could even be considered a positive. Once players began to be able to keep a full hand after using Rose, the cards started seeing a lot more experimentation, especially in Arceus V-Star strategies. Despite the namesake card not being a VMAX, Arceus's Trinity of Attack was frequently used to power up many otherwise unplayable Pokemon VMAX attackers like Malamar and Lycanroc VMAX. In the late game, a Rose could be played to easily set up a VMAX Pokemon's energy and also get rid of unnecessary cards from your hand so that the Industrious and Scissors had a better likelihood of drawn into a card you may need to close out the game. Arceus V-Star had many different variants, and these VMAX ones were not the most common or the strongest but they were a legitimate part of the metagame that Rose helped enable. And at number 7, we have Blacksmith. This card lets you attach two Fire Energy cards to your discard pile to one of your Fire-type Pokemon. While Blacksmith was in the standard format, it had two distinct stints of playability. Immediately on its release, this card was played with Pyroar, a decent attacker with a very strong ability. This card's intimidating main ability prevented all damage that would be dealt to it by your opponent's basic Pokemon. Its Scorching Fang attack was decent, costing 1 Fire and 2 Colorless Energy to deal 6 damage plus 30 more if you discard a Fire Energy from Pyroar. Intimidating Main meant Pyroar was a huge pain to deal with for many of the strong EX-based strategies of the time. Blacksmith and your once per turn energy attachment could set up Scorching Fang's energy cost in a single turn. Thanks to Professor Juniper and Ultra Ball, it wasn't difficult to get Fire Energy into the discard pile over the course of a game either. When Pyroar and Blacksmith first released, they saw a large amount to play together. As the format developed, however, the deck couldn't stay relevant at the top of the meta due to players simply adapting their deck to deal with it. Pyro decks also had a very polarizing matchup spread, often having terrible matchups into any deck that isn't exclusively basic Pokemon, which meant it couldn't post consistent tournament results. The second time Blacksmith became playable in the standard format was with the release of Volcanion EX. Volcanion's Steam Up ability lets you discard a Fire Energy card from your hand to increase all damage dealt by your basic Fire Pokemon to your opponent's active Pokemon by 30 until the end of the turn. This ability worked excellently alongside Blacksmith as a way to put Fire Energies into your discard pile. It was perfectly reasonable for a Volcanion deck to set up a turn 1 Volcanic Heat Attack for 190 damage thanks to Blacksmith's two extra energy cards, the attachment from hand and the extra 6 damage provided by two uses of Steam Up, if you wanted to set up extra energy on the first turn. Blacksmith wasn't even needed thanks to the existence of the non-EX Volcanion. For one Fire Energy, Power Heat it deals 20 damage and lets you attach a Fire Energy to two of your bench Pokemon. In this strategy, Blacksmith could be used both as a way to take very early KOs or to set up attackers quickly in the late game after the non-EX Volcanion stopped being as relevant. Blacksmith's synergy with Volcanion EX is so powerful that it's even seen competitive usage in the expanded format on multiple occasions. Its most prolific partner was Turtonator GX, whose Bright Flame attack dealt 160 damage for 3 energy at the cost of discarding 2 Fire Energies attached to it. Thanks to Blacksmith and Volcano EX, it was easy to set up a Bright Flame attack on the first turn, and any subsequent Blacksmiths made the downside negligible. Even till this day, Blacksmith still sees niche use in the competitive format, although it competes for the role of Energy Acceleration with another card we'll discuss later. And at number 6, we have Kiawe. This supporter card lets you attach up to 4 Fire Energy cards to one of your Pokemon directly from your deck, but immediately ends your turn after it's played. Before getting to the specific decks and Pokemon cards Kiawe saw play in, there is one important rule that was different during this card's time and standard than it is now. During the Sun and Moon era of the TCG, the player going first could play a supporter card on their first turn, something that they can't do under the current rules. Decks that use Kiawe in Standard were rarely going to attack on their first turn, going second, regardless of this restriction. It's just important to note this card had no downside if used on the first turn of the game when no attacks can be made. Something the Pokemon TCG designers like to do is release a powerful Pokemon and good trainer card to supplement whatever game plan the Pokemon encourages. Kiawe was released at the same time as Ho-Oh GX, a Fire-type Pokemon with enormous attack costs. For 3 Fire and 1 Colors Energy, Phoenix Burn dealt 180 damage but couldn't be used during your next turn unless Ho-Oh switched out of the active spot. Phoenix Bird was obviously intended to be set up by the 4 energy Kiawe provided. This attack, even at just 180 damage, was capable of one-hitting KO many common Pokemon EX or GX like Tapu Lele GX or the Fire Week Golis Spot GX. With either a Choice Band attached or a Steam Up from Volcano and EX, Phoenix Burn dealing 210 damage was enough to one-hit almost everything in the metagame. This strategy had one major flaw though, and that was Kiawe's restriction. Since the supporter card would end your turn when played, your opponent could capitalize on the missed attack to get back into the game. 
If your first Ho-Oh GX got knocked out, it was important to have an easily accessible backup attacker without losing out on a turn. Usually this meant playing a few copies of Salazzle GX, whose cheek to use Diabolical Claws attack scaled up in damage as you took more prize cards. As you'd never need to attach energy to Ho-Oh GX, all of your attachments for turn could go to a bench Salazzle in preparation for the late game where Diabolical Claws could outdamage Phoenix Burn. There was also a very brief time in the standard format where Kiawe was playable with Reshrub and Charizard GX. This card played very similar to ho GX, except with higher damage output and HP. When played with this card, Kiawe was best as a card searched by Tapu Lulu GX going first, since Welder could allow you to attack when going second. For its entire time in the standard format, Kiawe was always somewhere to be found at competitive events. And at number 5, we have Professor Sada's Vitality, the newest card on this list. When you play this supporter, you can choose up to two of your ancient Pokemon and attach a basic energy card from your discard pile to each of them. Then, if you attach any energy, you draw three cards. For those of you who don't know, an ancient Pokemon is a type of Pokemon that has a special ancient tag in the top right of the corner's artwork. Although the ancient deck is relatively new to the TCG, it quickly established itself as a relevant strategy in the metagame. At the time of this video, the best ancient decks are ones using very efficient and powerful attackers like Roaring Moon, Coridon, and Roaring Moon EX sometimes all in the same deck list. Rory Moon and Coridon each have strong attacks for only 2 energy. The former's Vengeance Fletching deals 70 damage, plus 10 more for each Ancient card in your discard pile, and the latter's Primordial Beatdown deals 30 damage for each Ancient Pokémon you have in play. In the early game, Coridon can effectively KO lower HP evolving Pokémon, or set up chip damage onto higher HP Pokémon when your discard pile isn't fully set up for Vengeance Fletching. Since each of these Pokémon attacks only cost 2 energy, they can be set up in a single turn with Professor Sada's Vitality and the energy attachment from hand. Cards like Earthen Vessel can add multiple energy cards to your hand while discarding energy for Sada's Vitality and boosting Vengeance's Fletching's damage. The extra card draw from Sada's Vitality gives you steady flow of card draw throughout the game. In the late game, Palpad and Super Rod can recycle both Professor Sada's Vitality, some extra energies to attach from hand, and your attackers, which can reliably be set up in a single turn. With so many pieces of the deck being recyclable and easily reusable, this strategy can be a nightmare to answer once fully set up in the late game. As more ancient cards are released into the TCG, Professor Sada's Vitality and the deck that abuses it will only get stronger. And at number 4, we have Melanie. This card lets you attach one water energy from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon V. If you do, you draw three cards. Much like the previous card, Melanie's strength came from its ability to set up threats in various different situations. Due to how generic the card is, it saw usage in a wide variety of Pokemon V strategies. Not only did Melanie facilitate multiple different strategies, these decks often use the card in very different ways. A deck built around Vikavolt V would try to put a Water Energy to the discard pile as soon as possible with cards like Quick Ball or Radiant Greninja, so that the extra energy provided by Melody could set up a turn 1 Paralyzing Bolt, an attack which dealt 50 damage and prevented your Pokemon from using item cards. The earlier you were able to item lock your opponent, the stronger the effect is because many of the game's best consistency or set of cards are items. This strategy was also built around using Melanie every single turn often playing the full four copies drawn to the card as often as possible. Ice Rider Clarax VMAX decks were also equally as resilient on the supporter card. Since this Pokemon's max lance attack requires you to discard energy to deal large damage, Melanie was a vital tool in having two energy to discard every turn. The most prolific strategies to play Melanie weren't the ones built around playing it every single turn. In fact, these decks often played only one or two copies to be searched with Lumineon V, Drizzile, or drawn into over the course of a long game. The two best examples of this are decks built around Palkia V-Star or Arceus V-Star. Both Pokemon already had built-in ways to set up early energy, whether that be Star Portal for Palkia decks or Double Turbo Energy for Arceus and instead use Melanie to set up attackers later during the course of the game by recurring any energy that got discarded. Another deck that loved using Melanie to allow high-impact attacks from seemingly out of nowhere was Rapid Strike decks using Inteleon and Urshifu VMAX. This stratagem was built around dealing massive damage to your opponent's bench Pokémon and was extremely effective against decks that needed to play low HP evolving Pokémon. Inteleon VMAX's Double Gunner ability lets you discard a water energy to put two damage counters on two of your opponent's bench Pokémon. This discarded energy can then be reattached with Melanie to Earth Review VMAX, who, combined with a Rapid Strike energy, you could fulfill the cost of a G-Max Rapid Flow in a single turn. This attack made you discard all energies attached to Urshifu in order to deal 120 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. Some standard formats have been defined by how powerful G-Max Rapid Flow is, and Melanie only makes this attack more accessible. 
Melanie is an extremely strong supporter card that any deck using Pokemon V with Colors attack cost often used. And at number 3, we have Elisa Sparkle. This Fusion Strike card lets you attach one Fusion Strike energy to two different Fusion Strike Pokemon you had in play. Much like the ancient cards, Fusion Strike is a label that some Pokemon have been given as an archetype. Elisa Sparkle is very similar to Professor Sada's Vitality, in that it only works with one type of deck to set up attackers. What earns the supporter card the number 3 spot on this list is how format defining the Fusion Strike deck was, so much so that many players view the deck as ban worthy. The deck strength came from the combination of Mew VMAX, Genesect V, and Meloetta. Genesect's Fusion Strike system allowed you to draw cards until you had cards in your hand equal to number of Fusion Strike Pokemon you had in play. On turn 1, the deck would try to bench as many Genesect as possible in order to draw as many cards as necessary to set up aggressive plays. This is where Meloetta and Elisa's Sparkle were the most frustrating. Meloetta's Melodious Echo attack dealt 70 damage for each Fusion Strike energy attached to your Pokemon. With both energy attached by Elisa Sparkle and a single Fusion Strike energy from hand, Melodious Echo could deal 210 damage on the very first turn of the game and put immense pressure on your opponent. If necessary, the player could also use a Power Tablet to boost the damage further. This interaction was so powerful that a deck built around just using Meloetta was very good in the expanded format as well. In standard, the deck didn't even need to play the maximum 4 copies of Elisa Sparkle thanks to Genesect V and other consistency cards. To really put into perspective how powerful Fusion Strike was, it saw continuous play from the time it was released to the time it rotated as a top meta strategy, despite multiple cards being printed that were clearly designed to counter Fusion Strike. And at number 2, we have Welder. This supporter has the effect of attaching up to two Fire Energy cards from your hand to one of your Pokemon. Then, if you attach any energy, draw three cards. This card is one of the very few cards that attaches multiple energies without functionally ending your turn and with no downside. Welder's existence brought many Fire-type decks to the forefront of the metagame for as long as the supporter remained in the standard format, simply due to how powerful having upwards of three energy attachments per turn could be. Historically, the supporter card had three strongest abusers. Reshiram and Charizard GX, Mewtwo and Mewgx, and Blacephalon. Each of these Pokemon have powerful attacks with high energy costs that become somewhat trivial to enable with Welder in the format. Reshiram and Charizard GX and Blacephalon are played somewhat similarly, both decks trying to use supporters as frequently as possible to have a continuous flow of strong attackers. Getting the requisite energy in hand for Welder was made trivial thanks to the plethora of strong trainers which supported Fire-type energies that released alongside it. At the cost of two cards in your hand, Fiery Flint added four Fire Energy from your deck to your hand, and the Stadium card Giant Hearth it could add two Fire Energies from your deck to your hand every turn at the cost of one card from your hand. These decks also wouldn't run out of energy because Fire Crystal could add three Fire Energy from your discard to your hand for no additional cost. With a continuous stream of energy, these two decks could set up attackers every turn while drawing through more of their deck. Mewtwo and Mewgx use Welder a bit differently. This Pokemon's Perfection ability lets it use the attacks of all Pokemon GX on your bench or in your discard pile. With many powerful utility attacks such as Solgaleo GX's Turbo Strike or Mega Lopunny and Jigglypuff GX's Jumping Balloon having colorless energy costs, Welder and the aforementioned Fire Energy Consistency Trainers were an excellent way to accelerate energy and put cards into the discard pile. Many different casual or jank decks took this approach too, as there was little good energy acceleration during Welder's time in the standard format. This card's influence also reached into the expanded format, where newly released fire types are often stronger because of Welder's presence. Most recently, Gouging Fire EX, a card that sees little to no standard format play, has begun seeing expanded format success due to Welder allowing turn 1 Blaze Blitz attacks. Even with such great competitive history, there's still one supporter card that's had an even larger impact. Rounding out the list of the best supporter cards that attach energy, we have Raihan. This card can only be played if one of your Pokemon was knocked out during your opponent's last turn. Raihan has the effect of attaching a basic energy card from your discard pile to one of your Pokemon. Then, if you attach any energy this way, you can add any card from your deck to your hand. What makes Raihan uniquely powerful is how generic the card is. As long as your deck plays basic energy cards, you can slot in a copy of Raihan. The card also works in a rather special way compared to other energy attachment supporters. Since your opponent needs to have taken a KO during their last turn to be used, this card acts more as a piece in setting up a comeback rather than a card to enable a fast attacker. As seen with Melody and Professor Sada's Vitality, cards that help you quickly get attackers ready in the mid to late game are highly valuable. And Raihan just does this with the added flexibility of being able to attach the energy card to any Pokemon. 
Having no restrictions on where the energy could go was relevant compared to restrictions like Melody's. When Raihan first released, the Inteleon engine was extremely popular, as their shady dealings ability lets you search your deck for trainer cards. In some cases, a deck like Urshifu VMAX may want to use Inteleon's Aqua Bullet instead of an attack from Urshifu. Granted, if all Raihan did was attach a single energy, it wouldn't be on this list. Usually, searching any card from the deck in the Pokemon TCG comes with a heavy cost or restriction due to how powerful getting any one card is. Using the same example of Urshifu VMAX, a Raihan could attach one basic energy card from your discard pile to Urshifu and then search out Rapid Strike Energy as your attachment for a turn allowing you to respond to your opponent's KO with an immediate G-Max Rapid Flow. This is only one of the many different ways Raihan's attachment and surge could be used over the course of the game. For as long as the card remained in the format, any player using a deck with basic energy had to consider if they wanted to play Raihan due to how generic and potentially game-winning it could be. Alright, and that's it for the best energy attachment supporters. If you have any ideas for future videos just like this one, please let us know down in the comments below.